Hey, I'm here with Jeff Depotzi, uh, ex-Canadian Special Forces member and now owner and operator of the Special Forces Experience, which is an amazing uh, kind of mix between an adventure retreat and uh, uh, self-development and personal growth journey uh, designed for men who are seeking to, to better themselves in life. Uh, Jeff has been kind of an incredible mentor to me through my life, and I'm really excited to introduce him to uh, to my listeners today. So welcome, Jeff. Hey, Brian. How's it going? Uh, much gratitude for having me on. Well, oh, much gratitude for carving the time out. I know you're busy between everything in life you've got going on. Um, and so, again, this podcast is kind of about how uh, how people who stay at really high levels of performance uh, structure their lives to help keep them there. And, and in both parts of your life now, uh, being, again, uh, from the Canadian Special Forces before and then transitioning into a civilian role where you're creating a business and uh, not only creating a business, but like running this uh, this whole experience, which was a wild ride to be a part of, um, everything you do seems to be very, very highly demanding, although probably in some different ways. Yeah, yeah, I would say <laughs> for sure. Um, I don't know exactly where I could go on that because they're just such big, broad topics. I don't know. Do you want to start with um, back in the past or move right into this time frame? What feels good to you? Uh, I guess we'll go chronologically. Um, I know the uh, the kind of special forces community, I think, is of a lot of interest to a lot of people. And I know a lot of people in the world are trying to figure out what the special forces guys are doing to keep themselves there. So if you wanted to start, just like, how did you keep yourself going through all the demands of being a tier one operator? Okay. So it, there's a massive spectrum there. Anytime you get to a high level of anything, you can imagine the, the support network that's there to keep someone at the top of a pinnacle, um, at the top of their echelon. So yes, lots of onus on the operator, in this case, like myself, to maintain that, but it would be very unfair if we didn't start by talking about the, the support that's there. So one of the beauties of the tier one world is everybody wants to try out their methods, usually new methods, or proven tried and true methods with the special forces. So there's all that access from outside the government that wants to um, improve their country's own special forces. So there's so much there, Brian. So much new things that come in, such as yourself with your emotional recall and how that can fall in to these kinds of things. Um, every level of training, everything that's new in the scientific or medical fields. So it's all access. And the beauty of it is with the autonomy that the operator is given, it's not just one person trying to develop all these things for the operator. The operator has a lot of say. And as we move through life and we hear and see different things, they can bring programs, products in to try it out. If it works, it sticks, you know. Um, to kind of go back up to the base with the, uh, the support though, you got every kind of access to medical care you would need. Um, all the high level stuff are, are PSP. Those are the sports trainers. I say sports, but in this case uh, for operation and combat level things, they stay boned up to the highest degree. They're gone all the time, learning new things to bring back. And the challenge is, real challenge is we move around so much. It's not like we just stay on base with our great gym and all our support <laughs> and you know, all the things we need, all the bells and whistles. We have to be able to take this anywhere in the world. So a lot of it's distilled down and taught to the operator how to make it mobile, right? Yeah. How to sustain your body, you know? Think about the impact on shoulders and hips in a job like this. You gotta maintain that. Sometimes you deploy and you're gone three, four, five, six months, you know, you don't have the gym with you. You don't have the, uh, the physio with you. You don't have the acupuncture, you know, you don't have the Cairo, you don't have, you don't have, right. Yep. So something that's built into this, 
is, is a flexibility, you know, metabolic flexibility, physical flexibility. Um, you have to be able to train your body one way, but it also has to adapt. You could go somewhere where you can't eat keto or paleo. It's just not going to happen. Sometimes you might be on rations. I don't even know what that would be considered uh, devastating to the body, but that's what you got. And if your system can't adapt quickly to it, you're not going to perform well, right? So inside of there, there is this flexibility for deploying it quickly. Um, yeah, I'd say that. Okay, so lots of flexibility. And I guess, were there habits or things you did daily, weekly, monthly that just really helped you keep up that flexibility? Personally, I'm a, uh, I, I like flexibility. I, I used to dabble with morning routines and evening routines and things of that nature, but I find that I get too dependent on it. And when I don't have it, my body's like, okay, what's going on? You know, say if I did daily yoga, then when I'm not able to do daily yoga, my body, my breath, everything feels a little out of line. I would say, Definitely the biggest base of all of this is physical fitness. You know, that, that is the key to, to it all. You got to make sure your muscles, bones, ligaments, tendons, all that stuff are at the highest capacity that they can be given the amount of time and space you have, right? Because when you deploy, <clears throat> you're going, your body's going to go and it's going to be loaded, whether it's, uh, you know, stress load or, actual physical load or mental load, cognitive load, all that kind of stuff, it's going to be stressed. And one of the best things to keep it functioning well is that good muscular skeletal base. So there is no normal day back at the unit, but if it was kind of normal, you know, show up, train your body, and then you spend the rest of the day training your mind and all the other jazz in between there. There's, there's really, you, you, you name it, you guess it, you, from barbells to parkour, from whatever it is, you know, guys are doing it, finding what works good for them. And as I mentioned, those support staff, distilling it down and seeing what really works quickly. You know, time is a precious commodity when you're, when you're gone up to nine months of the year or more, or, you know, sometimes less, but you don't want to be spending hours and hours training. You, if you could do something in half an hour, for example. So there's lots of combat style, we call it combat style training, you know, asymmetric movements, you know, like being able to carry loads in different ways. Uh, yeah, things of that nature, Brian. Okay, and then uh, you'd also mentioned spending a lot of the day doing some mental training. What kind of mental training did you guys get into? Well, there's, Again, kind of the, <laughs> uh, the possibilities are limitless. First, you got to train your stuff, right? Your shooting, your CQB, your insertion methods, such as, uh, you know, hey ho, skydiving, rappelling, all, all the, the driving, like the, the myriad of insertion stuff. So that, that keeps up your mental, um, your mental resilience plus flexibility and neuroplasticity. But we also do actual neuroplasticity training. We have, an area where you can go sit down on the computers and do things. I don't remember the names of the programs, but you do neuroplasticity training for a little while. And then you go do your CQB or you go do whatever you're doing. Neuroplasticity stuff in all different forms. We do, can't remember, it's called MVIS, I believe is the acronym, but it's the light board, the sports, sports vision. I'm not sure if you've heard of that. You know, where you got, you got to recall numbers, but you have to have outputs, um, all that kind of behavioral cognitive load kind of stuff and again there's all sorts of things there's no normal day though so you come back you could have a whole bunch of things in there we do things like hooded box drill hooded box drill is where you're wearing a mat, uh, hood like a blacked out hood and then you do your, your drills and this style of training trains different um, cognitive pathways neural pathways and it's the difference between a reaction and a learned drill, it's somewhere in between there. So it's, it's a style of mental training. And then just the nature of the job, all the ups, all the downs, all the 
stressors, everything in there and everything in between. Um, yeah. And so you've, uh, I mean, like that kept you up really well and obviously you were uh, quite high performing and, and are a part of a couple records that have been set. Um, and then transitioning from that where every day has been kind of structured so that it's unstructured, if you will, or, or constantly varied and moving into trying to create a business and, and uh, from what I've seen quite successfully creating a business, but where things you almost need more consistency to really create that business. Uh, how have you handled that transition? Well, I think when you leave a chaos, <laughs> uh, a job that you have to thrive in chaos, and then you move into the world of entrepreneurship, which can have a lot of chaos, especially with me, I'm not exactly a uh, corporate business guy do by the numbers in the books. So that definitely helped that transition over because you're right, it's constantly varied, right? So we try to find some routines, my wife and I, however, I would say that there is no, no real patterns to my days. But what I do like to have in there is, you know, breath, posture, movement, and relaxation. And whatever my breath feels that day, whether it's box breathing when I'm training or more of a meditative style breathing, you know, literally posture there's only a few of them and one's relaxed or one's like that heroic posture right yep movement whether it's a, a variation of yoga or qigong hiking so we spend most of our time here in sedona arizona and it's the day hiking capital of america super beautiful try to get out get on the trails run in walk in as much as i can being outside in nature you know soaking up all those spores and good stuff that nature gives to us yeah, you're and missing some great uh, hurricane like winds in Ottawa today. Oh, really? Is it uh, is it raining? <laughs> or? I think my car almost blew over. Some <laughs> rain, some wind. Should have bought a bigger car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, then yeah, that last one is proper relaxation. Actual just relaxing, and then sleep, and try to vary that. I would say the only thing that kind of shows up as normal is the one or two cups of coffee I have in the morning and everything else is what I kind of feel that day. But again, I mentioned physical and mental flexibility, metabolic flexibility. I find now in this version of my life, there's a lot more spiritual flexibility to be in practice. And those are those things like the meditations, the yogas, a lot of contemplative practices. I have my own agenda now, right? So yep. I have a little more time and I, yeah, I love, love the art of contemplation, reading, listening to audio books, things of that nature, just expanding my horizons that way. Anything good that you've been listening to lately or reading lately that have been uh, influential? Oh, always. Yeah, a great book called uh, Behave. It's a big behemoth of a book. <laughs> um, I can't remember if it's Sapolsky or Sapolsky. I'm terrible with names. I, I think apologize. it's Sapolsky, but I'll, uh, I'll double check that. Yeah, Sapolsky, that's it. Nice, nice book on human behavior. And it takes a great, a great um, approach. So as you know, with the SFE, the Special Force Experience, we base a lot of stuff on our model of uh, P plus E equals B. That's personality plus environment equals behavior. And in his book, he's really validated a lot of the environmental stuff. So a lot of people, you know, geneticists and neuroscientists and all that really focus a lot on the personality, you know, your genes make you kind of stuff. And now they're just finding it's context, context, context. And, you know, the brain creates culture, culture creates the brain, and it just keeps cycling through and that impacts our behavior. So that's a, that's a really good one. I'm listening to the Dao, uh, the Dao and the Power, um, Tao Te Ching. That's a, that's a great one. It's one of the oldest you know, pieces of literature on earth. And, uh, you know, it really suits me, that hermetic, stoic lifestyle. I don't live it fully because I, I like the balance somewhere in between. And what else we got? We got Warriors of the Wasteland going on right now. So I always like to have a few different books going on. And Warriors of the Wasteland is just this author who's trying to piece together the actual facts of the uh, uh, 
not the Holy Grail itself, but the, the Grail Wars and all that kind of stuff and where its genesis was. And it's so interesting seeing all the old gods and how in Egypt, things, things were going on in Egypt with the bull gods were going on in Britain at the same time and how it spread around and how each area, Indo-Europe and all those places developed into the next steps in, in very similar ways. It's pretty interesting just to keep things kind of, you know, mixed up. Yeah, well, there definitely a couple different perspectives going on. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that's, uh, I think, probably like important for, for me and for hopefully a lot of other people just to kind of hear how you've especially transitioned from chaos into sort of less chaos in the <laughs> entrepreneurship world. Um, but, and then like one of the most interesting things I wanted to talk to you about today, uh, I think just got to do some fan service and hit on the old special forces days, but um, the special forces experience itself uh, is created in terms of trying to foster positive and post-traumatic growth. Um, Can you talk a little bit about that and how that you've seen in kind of your own life and journey and, and the people who have been through the the SFE so far, how that post-traumatic growth kind of affects people and helps them achieve a higher level yeah i can do that so post-traumatic stress disorder has gotten a lot of traction lately negative things always seem to catch a lot of momentum before the positive things so i think post-traumatic growth is the big brother of ptsd there's a lot of things that can happen to cause post-traumatic stress disorder usually you need some form of high stress usually over a prolonged period of time, a an abnormal event that your mind's not used to, we'll call processing or calculating, um, that amygdala in a really fired up state, and just over you know, a period of time with your cortisols and glucocorticoids and all those kinds of things being dripped in your mind. <clears throat> your hippocampus starts to do funny things. And then usually the kicker is afterwards. So you have the events, you have the stress, you have all that going on. Then afterwards, the body's not given proper time or means to heal up both physiologically and psychologically. Psychologically, something the army didn't master, but had pretty good built in was, you know, just talk, talking to the guys, talking through the experience, talk, 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 normalize it, you know, make it uh, okay, get it out, get it out. Okay. And then put it into scenarios where, your body feels relieved where you're in a good state, you're talking it out. So it combines positive thoughts with the experience, you know, post-traumatic growth, you have the events, you have all the stuff leading up, whatever it is, that's a stressor. It's just, I think proper management apps, creating a really positive experience. Cause what happens is the body can learn to metabolize these stressors, these cortisols better. Your mind can filter a little bit better. There is a a little bit more to it. Some people's hippocampus remembers details during stress extremely vividly, and those people are a little bit more prone to PTSD. However, most people come out on the other side. If you take that two-pronged approach, psychologically, physiologically, building yourself back up, like, like muscles that get torn, you become stronger. You're better at managing stress. You're more decisive during stress. You're, you, you can handle the loads better. You can handle anxiety longer without it impacting your body negatively. And we kind of, with the SFE, we stepped out on a limb a bit with that one because most people aren't, I don't know if anyone's actually fully saying it right now, where these men come out and they put themselves in an event stressful enough, and I think you would agree, where it stems that normal stream of consciousness. <laughs> You've seen them, right? We drain them of all their hormones. Like most of them, their muscles have begun eating themselves. Like we have cognitively frayed them and continue to push their bodies. But you, you've seen the other on the other end, right? We have our practices in mean, um, some of which we can talk about, some of which you and I will maintain that secret. Yeah. Um, is the key though. You have the event, the eight days in this case, or whatever the, the stress load is. And then afterwards, um, we put the things into play. One of them is community or support, accountability, those kinds of things. Men being able to hang out and continue to talk, normalize that experience. 
And then uh, some of it is things to avoid, things to do. Some of it's been around forever, right? Positive talk. Stay away from anything that really, anything, any environmental stimuli that causes you stress, news, bad relationships, things of that nature. You know, clean out your life a little bit. And of course, that physical level. If your body comes in physically ready, if your heart, if you're able to think with your heart rate up higher, you're going to be able to be better in those stress situations. And then afterwards, your body will heal up better. And, you know, all, you know, the myriad of health benefits that come with keeping up that physical, all the endorphins, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, and it's been, it's been great results. So it's, it's been my experience. Well, I know talking to some of the guys coming through the other end, or uh, I know uh, Vaughn's done a couple of interviews with uh, uh, Lift Heavy Run Long in terms of like some of the guys coming out and what they've experienced. And, and there's been a lot of really big positives. And even I myself coming out of that as staff, like I, I came out a different person in a very good way. And, and it was a really, really cool experience. And I didn't even have quite the same level of stress the, that week or two <laughs> that, uh, that I think most other people did. So um, just kind of an awesome tool. And, and I think, yeah, you're right. You're kind of going out on a limb and applying it in a very new and different way than most people have. And I'm a big fan personally, and I have come to really believe in it. And I think it's an important message to share. Um, are there other aspects to, because I know there was a lot that went into the design of the SFE. Are there any other aspects to the SFE that you found um, you'd kind of drawn from what had been really helpful in your own life? Uh, of course, of course. <laughs> so when I left the, even before, that idea of human optimization, everything from the SF was a big part of my life. I love that, chasing that, helping that grow in the unit itself. I, I think it's fascinating, you know, human performance stuff. So all that military experience for sure, all the life experience. If I look back through my life, every difficult event, when I was on the other side, I was, I was stronger. And the concept of, you know, placing yourself in those situations, you know, really started to dawn on me. People have done it for a long time, you know, go climb a high mountain and all those kinds of things. The thing is though, climbing the high mountain doesn't put you in all the circumstances that we at the SFE put you in to draw out certain thoughts, certain behaviors to show you, because that's a big portion is that the candidate has to see it all right. The, uh, yeah, all those those things played hugely into the design. A big one that is kind of a no-brainer that a lot of people don't see, though, is that we go into the wilderness. There's no electronics. It's You're very much on nature cycles and schedule out there. You know, you're immersed in it. It's very secluded. There's no EMFs in the area. It's kind of a, a rewilding of man a little bit. And... It's one thing to just, again, go out and sit in the bush or whatever and camp. But once you start combining these layers, you know, those concepts, the post-traumatic growth, the, uh, the performance tools, the personality assessments, and the rewind, like a lot of good things come from that. And on the other end, all the guys felt a lot better. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Well, when I, come, well I, just, I just want to say when it comes to design and experience, obviously from zero years old all the way to now, every little bit goes in there. But I would also say there's a huge, I believe in, you know, there's my lens and then there's on our team, there's your lens. And then there's like all the other cadre. I wouldn't, that's the strength of it is having all those lenses, all those inputs as much um, of that spectrum of men and women because we need to balance out the masculine and feminine and putting all of those things to all their experiences all their educations come into this and at the end of it you know it, that's the product that comes out those multiple lenses so it, it's 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 just a massive amount of design to consider yeah well so what i was gonna say but especially in the the, the nature and the rewilding of man 
I find that that was on its own just such a huge impact. Like, I mean, minus how cold and rainy and icy and terrible the weather was when we got there. Um, kind of like once the sun came up the next morning, like all of a sudden, I think everybody was kind of already much more at ease than than they had been for a while, just being kind of stuck out in the bush with, again, nothing around and nobody but each other and no electricity. And it's it's a really great experience. And yeah, it, it, I know you it, do that a little more often, too. <laughs> yeah, so it, 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 you kind of hit on it there. What happens is when you go through even those little micro stresses, you know, you mentioned the freezing nights and all that, the sun comes up. You know, when it rains, we grow. And another zinger, you know, takes pressure to make diamonds. <laughs> all, all the saves, you know what I mean? And yep. yeah, that next day that sun comes up, it feels better, right? Oh, so and much better. One, one night of being cold, the sun comes up. So it, it, as we continue in the program to tire out their brains and bodies and minds and stuff, those things happen more often and it forces a clarity on the motivations and values that motiv most uh, are most important to them. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I cut you off there. Brian. No, no, absolutely. And it, absolutely. Like there's uh, so many things I remember coming back and I've never looked at like a, a hot shower or a comfortable warm bed in quite the same way as like the first two weeks I got back and every night when I was back, it was this luxury that I felt like I'd never experienced in the same way before and it, it it really brings out the small things when you cut out uh cut out more or less everything from your life and then come back to it yeah when, when you quiet the noise quiet the noise of normal life then you get down to you know maslow's hierarchy all your physiological needs how how enriching they can all be especially if they're done really well right you, you mentioned sleep hot shower so you know thermal dynamic regulation uh, nutrition all those things you get a real appreciation for them and it's only through strengthening those and appreciating those that you can climb that pyramid to self-actualization and self-transcendence it's the yeah, ultimate goal one last question for you kind of and we've touched on it especially like the ultimate goal um, but I don't think we've outright said it so one of the things that keeps coming up is uh, is one of the bigger uh, pieces of performance is the tie-in of purpose to somebody's performance and the kind of passion and everything along the line that comes with it. Um, but what would you say is kind of the purpose that you've connected to that's allowed you to kind of make it through your time in the special forces and now your time as, as an entrepreneur? Because I, I know for sure there have been times where you definitely need something motivating you to keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I need to just define a few things here from the SFE point of view. Of course. So we believe that everybody's purpose on earth is the same to be the highest vibrational version of yourself, the most fully functioning, most optimized, not in a selfish way, but just get to that point where you're living your best version. And then from there, you move into what we call life's work. That's what you do to raise up society's bar outside of you whether it's you and your partner you know you and your employees or bigger volunteering whatever it is where you elevate society and i've always really been driven by you know back when i was a kid and i volunteer and then all my military career just helping me like it sounds so cliche making the world better but that vi higher vibrational version of itself there's no reason that we should not be elevating human beings more, you know, making them a little bit better. And that's kind of the hope behind this. We take already high achieving, high performing men. And the thought is if we can make them 1% better, half a percent better, whatever that arbitrary number of better is, think about the, the impact, you know, the repercussions that'll move out from that. If one person, one man somewhere in the world is that much better already from where he is, his kids will be better. His wife will be better. Those people around him through osmosis will just grow. And, it, and it, that kind of, that's the stuff that really lights me up. And if we can do that, which in a lot of cases, I think most cases, and you would agree, we did that. We achieved that aim. And it's still going because we have a little saying, uh, process never ends. 
And it, it really is actually held pretty true. Um, <laughs> So on that note and, and on the process, I know you guys uh, have currently got some, a few spots left open for, for May. Yes, there's a few spots left open. Um, so what we do is we, we're looking for a spectrum of men, right? It's not just like any applicant, anyone who's willing to show up. We want to have somewhere between 50s, mid 50s down to well, we have an 18 year old this year <laughs> and oh, just, uh, he's so oh, it's mind blowing how intelligent well and, and the young guys all, last year were super impressive too uh, some guys that are just ready to go but however it's that spectrum right different walks of life different ethnicities as much as we can have in there because we're all one of the biggest things they're going to do is learn through osmosis with each other as they watch each other navigate this um, day days so yeah, we have a few spots left. We're slowly chiseling away at it. I, I'd imagine somewhere around mid-November, end of November, we'll be we'll meet our, our quota, our thirty guys for the year, and then uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens on May fifteenth. <laughs> All right. Well, I will do my best to get this up before then, if in case anybody listening wants to try and apply. But otherwise, I guess they're uh, waiting for twenty twenty one. It's. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's filling up fast. So I like to yes. see that because I think the uh, the impact it's having on people is incredible. And and I think it's well-deserved that it's filling up so fast. I'm excited yes. to start getting the uh, the fall cereals in there too. But yeah, I feel yeah. like I need my, my two weeks in the woods like every six months or so. Uh, and, <laughs> a little reset. <laughs> but never during the nice nice time of year. No, no, I can't get that during the nice time of year. <laughs> Ruins the fun. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. I'm going to get all your, uh, your social media handles and everything else up in the, uh, the show notes. If okay. anybody wants to look Jeff up, it'll be all there. I think uh, Jeff to Patty underscore for Instagram. Um, are you on Facebook at all? I, I yes. If he's on Facebook. I'll get I, that I up think there so. And, yeah. The, the best way to go about it is the special forces experience.com. And, and at the bottom of that website. is all the social stuff and yeah, head down the rabbit hole. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for being on. Can't wait to talk to you again. I'm sure you're going to be back on at some point if I can rope you into it. (laughs) Of course, of course.